Oh, and welcome to Why Don't the All Blacks Like Scotland? And uh, you might say, what? That's a silly question, really. And in some ways it really is. But uh, it's a good way of getting on to uh, the way that teams are allocated tours or how they negotiate tours uh, around uh, the world. So the only tours that really happen uh, to one country anyway nowadays are in June. And those will be changing to July in 2020 with the new global calendar. All the other tours in this, so the November tours, uh, obviously uh, because of the proximity of all the countries in Europe, I mean, the teams just go and play different teams. They don't go and play one team um, for three games uh, or more. And actually anything more than three games has, has passed out. And we only have three game test series nowadays. Some announcements that have happened recently are that Wales will be he- heading to the land of the Long White Cloud, or Aotearoa, uh, which means uh, New Zealand in Maori, uh, in 2020 for a three-match tour. Uh, and then we also came in from another uh, article actually out of Ireland, uh, was that Ireland would be, would be touring uh, New Zealand in 2022, uh, which was uh, a bit surprising. Well, for the first one that was surprising was Wales, actually, because the new, uh, the, the new World Cup, oh, sorry, the new World Rugby Global Calendar said that uh, for there'll be three test windows, a uh, three-game test uh, window are in July, except for the year following a Rugby World Cup, in which case it would just be two test matches. Uh, and yet Wales have announced, or not announced, but it's come out through the press that Wales will be playing a three-test tour then. Uh, and uh, so it looks like that's an extra test outside of the main international window. So don't expect every team to be playing three tests uh, in July 2020 just because Wales have agreed to do so with New Zealand. You've got to remember that New Zealand were one of the countries that was actually asking for more test matches in the new, uh, with the new, rate, with the new world um, uh, calendar, uh, whereas um, teams like England are actually asking for less. So uh, let's just have a look at the teams that have uh, been, um, that have had, uh, when the teams have toured uh, to uh, New Zealand. And you can see here, so if we go back to 2020, Scotland had a two-test tour. Um, in 2001, uh, France came to visit. And I'm just listing here the Northern Hemisphere sides uh, that have toured uh, New Zealand um, during the June windows. Uh, actually, some of these are also actually into July as well, but that's basically um, when they are. Uh, Italy and Ireland played two games in 2002. And in 2003, England, Wales and France all visited uh, prior to the Rugby World Cup. England came back again in 2004 for, a two, for two tests. Then there was the Lions Tour in uh, 2005. Um, Ireland had a couple of, t- a couple of tours uh, and then France had a couple, uh, sorry, a couple, a couple of um, tests. France had a couple in Canada, uh, again, prior to the Rugby World Cup in 2007. Uh, and then since then, if we look at the next three Rugby World Cup years, there are no visitors in 2011, 2015 and 2019. Um, the, the, the teams don't, uh, the, the, the calendar has changed uh, then. And that's where you'll see basically we go from having, up until 2010, we have these uh, smaller uh, um, tours that are, that are less than three games. Um, and also countries going to both Australia and New Zealand um, and hence or, or, or stopping off in the islands and hence having more than one country uh, come. And then after 2011, uh, we have a new calendar um, that changed how things um, uh, have, have been over the last for about 12 years. Um, the, or sorry, not 12 years, about eight years. <laughs> um, and so the three World, World, World Cup cycles, it, it kind of changes. And then we have Ireland uh, came for three tests in 2012. Whilst the British and, uh, British and Irish Lions uh, countries were away in Australia, France came for three tests. And if you look back in, when it went to South Africa, France also turned up as did Italy. Uh, we go back to 2001. Uh, again, France came to play. So whilst it hasn't been announced yet who is going to come in, um, sorry, in 2021 uh, when the British and Irish Lions go to South Africa, uh, you'd have to guess that uh, having look, looking back at previous years, uh, the fact that France... Um, have the last three British and Irish Lions tours that have not been in New Zealand. France have come and toured uh, New Zealand. You have to expect that they will be coming um, over. 
So we had Ireland, uh, England had three, Wales had three uh, tests uh, before the British, before the Lions. France were here this year. And surprisingly enough, Wales are back again in 2020. So I said, A, it's surprising because it's three tests. Um, and secondly, it's surprising because they were only here in 2016. So there's only a four-year gap between trips, which is extremely um, uh, low. Uh, it's a very quick turnaround to think that Scotland have not toured since the year 2000, which is hence why it's titled Why Do New Zealand Not Like Scotland? And then I'd say Ireland are back in 2022, um, 10 years since they did their tour in 2012. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if England were coming back in 2024, 10 years after their last tour as well. Uh, and you might say, Paul, why do you think it's going to be England rather than Scotland? Well, A, England uh, have been come back, but, it's, but basically this comes down to money um, on two sides. One is selling tickets uh, and the other one is TV revenue. So France, uh, um, for example, have got a big TV market. We can see that with the top 14 TV deal. And hence, uh, New Zealand like France to come over because they can sell the TV rights uh, to French companies uh, and make a uh, uh, and, and make some good money. Also, let's there have been some classic games between France uh, and New Zealand in recent years. There was the Rugby World Cup uh, in 2015, um, and then before that, in 2007, uh, the quarter final uh, where France dumped Fra uh, New Zealand out of the Rugby World Cup in Cardiff, um, and those games. I mean, there's, there's, there's a history uh, which is something to build around when how they can sell tickets. Someone said to me, but Paul, news, uh, All Blacks tests always sell out. They have been doing better recently, but no, they don't. I got a ticket for a Bledisloe Cup game in, I think it was 2014 or 2015, uh, the, the week before the test match. So uh, these games don't automatically sell out. They do, New Zealand, the New Zealand Rugby Union do have to make a lot of effort to sell their games, hence why... Uh, Argentina went to Nelson um, recently because uh, a much smaller ground. The All Blacks haven't been there in a long time. They knew they would sell it out. If they played Argentina at Eden Park, there's a good chance that they would not sell out uh, Eden Park uh, and all of those tickets. So, Also, it takes the All Blacks around the country and doesn't have them just in Auckland, which is a good thing as well. Don't get me wrong. Uh, but yeah, this, this automatic idea that the All Blacks will always sell out um, home test matches is not true. Ireland, obviously, being a number two in the world now, uh, New Zealand uh, very definitely want to get them back here because they know, again, that that'll be seen as being a very competitive series uh, and hence they want to get them back. So it's not, su uh, not surprising that Ireland uh, are, are back in 2022. Wales, now, perhaps we're, go we're heading back to the 1950s where we talk about um, the Welsh heyday, uh, but um, Wales have beaten New Zealand on three occasions uh, and have been part of uh, some very good, uh, some may play big parts of some very good uh, British and Irish Lions tours to New Zealand. So there's a history, there's a romanticism there that they can help sell tickets. England, again, that's almost everyone's favourite um, uh, team to dislike or to hate. Uh, but again, England, uh, this, the, the biggest market um, after France probably in the world for um, rugby on from a TV rights point of view. Uh, and hence, another team that uh, New Zealand like to get back down here because of uh, that side of things. New Zealand's Rugby Union and the RFU, though, um, have definitely got different opinions as to where rugby should be going. Uh, so it's not a surprise that actually Ireland are coming back first. I mean, Ireland, let's be honest, both Wales and Ireland have played the All Blacks uh, um, in out of window games during November test matches, um, and that does build up a relationship there. Scotland historically haven't played games outside of the windows. They did this year against Wales, but normally they don't uh, add extra games around November. Um, and that's why you're probably seeing that they haven't built up those relationships with the New Zealand Rugby Union. Ireland obviously played New Zealand uh, in Chicago. Um, Wales also are happy to play uh, and share revenue, basically, uh, outside of the, the international window, whereas England have categorically said that, no, they won't stump up the amounts of money that, uh, that uh, the All Blacks demand um, when uh, they... Uh, for, for that extra game outside of uh, international window, which is why we've had such a gap between uh, England and uh, New Zealand or England or Black games, uh, both in November window and also uh, the June window as well, which we had to wait until this year um, for that game. So there's a lot more going on about behind the scenes than just purely ranking songs. So, oh, yes, Scotland haven't been ranked high enough to uh, to, to, to demand a three, three test series, but you look at France. Um, and if we just have a quick look at sheet two here, you'll see that France, uh, who have been uh, sort of below 
uh, Scotland in the world rankings for, for, um, for some time not been great. They've had 12 test matches since the year 2000. Um, Scotland only had one. So it's not just down to how um, your world ranking. It's also down to are you available during those British and Irish Lions windows we, we, where there's not as much choice as the teams to come and, uh, to, to come and tour in New Zealand um, and also that money side of things. And hence we can see Ireland, uh, England and Wales. Now Wales will add on three more tests after the World Cup. So they'll jump up to nine. And you can see that the, the relationship that Ireland... Um, sorry about the spelling there, actually. Um, the, the relationship there that, I, that um, Ireland and Wales have um, built up with those extra things has paid off in getting them tours. So there you go. That's my opinion uh, as to why I think that Scotland aren't getting uh, the tours you perhaps uh, expect them to do. But Scotland and Italy being, the, I say, there are six Tier 1 nations that try and tour the four uh, tier 1 nations uh, during that uh, mid-year window and so Scotland and Italy are the two sides that have historically missed out uh, and had to had to put up had to um, have the sort of smaller uh, tours um, which is why you'll see teams like Italy and Scotland going more to Japan uh, to North America uh, and to the Pacific Islands as well uh, because um, say New Zealand, South Africa and Australia uh, just won't be offering those um, three test tours to them around the financial side. Because let's remember that this year was the first time that Ireland had had a three test tour uh, to Australia um, from memory. So uh, yeah, these, these, uh, it is new even for some of the, for the, for some of the sides. You know, Irish uh, Ireland uh, have uh, uh, only relatively recently, or, or this kind of last this decade, got themselves up uh, higher up the rankings. Whereas uh, before that, they perhaps weren't. You know, Scotland could have been were, were stronger than them, um, sort of before the turn of the century. So you've got that kind of uh, that, that history that's had to play itself out. Ireland's had to um, consistently stay high up the rankings um, to get uh, the, the, those opportunities. Rankings do pay part of it, but also uh, so does cash, uh, and also his, the history between the sides. Um, as I say, the, the Wales are still surviving off their 1950s. Um, and uh, that's been uh, part of it. Also, having a New Zealand coach um, helps build up those rivalries uh, and helps sell those tickets uh, and uh, and also TV ratings. Um, let me know your thoughts um, as to why the All Blacks don't like Scotland uh, and if you think this whole touring thing is fair. Clearly, it's it's not. I, I'd, I'd say it's not entirely fair, um, but uh, that's the way the world works at the moment, unfortunately. And, uh, yeah, uh, enjoy. hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to subscribe. Um, there's a link up there and up there and up there. Uh, we have two uh, videos that the YouTube artificial intelligence says you will absolutely adore. So go and watch those as well.